Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is on repairing the tow eye on the stem of a boat. The tow eye here on the green machine's a bit of aluminium plate, about 10 mil thick, and I'm presuming it's original. It's quite badly worn now, I'll bring you in closer and have a look. But it's, uh, it's always had a gal shackle through here. And it's not just how this gets towed to a trailer, because it, it's almost never on a trailer, but it is where all the mooring ropes for this boat attach. So some at the stern, of course, but all the bow ropes attach to this point. So over the years, sitting, just rocking in waves, it's worn away the soft aluminium. My plan is to actually cut this one off. I did toy with sort of welding some extra metal over the top here, but at the end of the day, aluminium is a softer metal than the steel shackles that go through here. So I'm kind of happy to replace this with something stainless. So my plan is to use something like this. This is a sort of stainless tow eye, pretty much made for this job. So I'm gonna cut this old tow eye off. Then I'll grind the surface here on the stem as flat as I can so that I've got a good surface for this washer section to rest on. Then I'll probably put a bit of Sikaflex through the holes as well, just to make sure it's not a leak. I don't think it's gonna be a bad leak and it is above the waterline, but it's not gonna hurt. So we'll get started. I'll first I'll just show you what's going on with the existing one and then I'll cut it off. So you can see here on the top, this metal is getting quite thin. It might last another year, but given the boats, you know, moored by that, I'm just not, not gonna take the risk. So we'll cut this one off and then I'll start drilling the holes. To cut this off, I'm just going to use a pretty thin cut-off wheel on an angle grinder. Then I'll probably change to some sort of grinding disc to flatten it off. Doesn't look too bad. I think I've got a bit of an angle going that way though. Whenever you grind something, just be careful. That bit of metal that's come off is going to be really hot. Particularly aluminium, it's weird, it conducts heat really well, but it never glows. So just be careful when using grinders not to burn yourself, as well as cut yourself. Now I look, this other angle grinder's still got a flap disc on it from doing the hull, so I'll just use that flap disc to square it up. I don't know how well that comes out on camera, but we've got quite a flat surface here now, and this is what I'm gonna drill into to mount the new tow eye. I didn't want this sort of round surface of the stem to attach to and have it rocking and rolling. So leaving some of that weld and cutting through it, it's actually giving me quite a nice pad. I'll put it pretty much centre here. Just mark the centre of both those holes. Then I'll punch both of those. This is just a uh, Sort of reasonably blunt point punch. Now just a little double check. Looks good. Pretty soft aluminium, but I'll do a pilot hole anyway. This is actually a five mil, so it's pretty big for that, but obviously just trying to keep it as square as possible in both directions. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, cutting oil on this and step it up to the 10 mil. I'm pleased to see there's quite a lot of metal through this section of the boat, probably about 20 millimetres. So it should be nice and strong. I'm going to do a bit of a test fit now and then I'm going to put some sealant on. Oh, it's a nice good fit. I'll go grab a tube of sealant. This time I'm using something called T-Rex, made in Belgium or whatever. Uh, it's sort of a cheaper version of something that is very similar to Sikaflex, but as far as I can see, it works just as well. So I'm gonna give it a bed. Now what I'm gonna do is put a, a bit in the actual holes so that these don't leak when the bolts go through. Then I'm also gonna put a bead across this surface 
where the flange is going to sit. Then I'm going to push it through. If I can find the holes now, I've covered them up. <laughs> yep, there we go. Wipe a bit of the excess off. So the plan now is to let that sealant set a little bit. If I go behind and, and crank the, the nuts up, all it's going to do is squeeze all that sealant out. So I'm going to let that set till it's not completely gone off, but it's reasonably firm. Then I'll go down and pull it. So it'll always stay there as a, a kind of a, a, a malleable sort of washer, I guess you'd say. A proper sort of bed of sealant. So I'll leave that to go for a little while. Then we'll duck around the other side and put the nuts on. This has been sitting for an hour or so now. And it's still pretty soft, but it's, it's not liquid anymore. It's oozed out a little bit further just from gravity, but I'm gonna let that keep setting and then I'll cut it off with a, with a blade later to neaten it up. But now I'm gonna go around the other side. We'll go inside the hole and uh, get those, that back plate and the nuts on. Oh, and before I forget, it's probably really worth mentioning, if you don't have quite a bit of silicon like I've put in here, stainless steel can react with aluminium, particularly if it's below the water line and the water's acting as like an electrolyte. But if you've got stainless into aluminium and you don't have a good coating of any sort of sealant, put something like Duralac. It's a special sort of anti-corrosive joining compound designed to stop these dissimilar metals from reacting with each other. So if ever you do put stainless and aluminium together, either put Duralac or some sort of sealing that sort of keeps the two different metals separated from each other to stop any corrosion in the aluminium. So here we are under the green machine. I'll just take you up front into the stateroom and I'll show you what's going on up there. Obviously I've taken all the uh, bedding and the plasma screen TVs and things out just so we can get access. But you'll see up here, these are the two ends of the U-bolt coming through. So I'm just gonna put some more sealant on the inside of the stem. Then we'll put that backing plate and the nuts on. There's already plenty of sealant all over these threads from pushing them through. But I'm just putting a bit of extra Loctite on to make sure these nuts don't come undone. I'm also going to put a couple of spring washers on for extra measure. And then the nuts. There's a fair bit of thread left on those bolts, so I'm going to use a long socket, a deep socket, to, um, to run them down. It's never very comfortable working inside boats. I'm definitely getting too old for this. Pretty happy with this now, it's feeling very secure. But I'm just gonna get a safety razor and just cut some of this excess sealant off. I'll probably let that set a couple of days, maybe even just till tomorrow. We're gonna flip this boat over tomorrow. So once it's flipped over the right way, I'll just torque those nuts up a little bit more because it won't squeeze the Sigaflex out anymore or the sealant out and I reckon that'll be good to go. Much happier with that. With all the work on the underside of the boat finished, it was time to flip it back over. Life gets a lot easier when you've got good mates, and fortunately Paul was there to give me a hand. Just 
So strap wise, I've got ratchet straps. Yeah. Then you just take the ratchet mechanism off. Them. Just use the strap up. Yeah. Onto itself. Onto itself yeah. here, and just a knot at the other end. Yeah. Just one of those you got? No, there should be a should be a couple floating around. Otherwise, we can use the rope. Well, mm. so there's nothing you can scratch on the side. Yeah, so let's get it onto the side. Just get it onto the side. Alright, All right. so if I lift this again, you'll we'll just take the stool now. Yep. Um, we might need just to shuffle that way as much as we can to get it on the side. Same so meal, that way. That way. Okay. So far, so good. So we can end each. That's the best way to clean your boat. Crane <laughs> uh, machines never look cleaner. Yeah, we'll just drag it. Oh, easy, Saga. Yeah, easy. Don't you usually say one, two, three, go when you do that? <laughs> there goes one chunk of air. Oh. <laughs> And you take your end. Yeah. You just won't drag the whole thing this way. Yep. Yeah. Gravity had a plan. Yep. Even if we didn't. Now, I think I made a slight miscalculation. I think it needs to be that one more. But, well, we can drag it right on the scale. It'll probably center itself. Yeah. Alright. So these pins, it's not locked to these. Yeah, it's looking pretty good actually. I don't know. 
Uh, the line's pretty good. Maybe a little bit to your left. A little bit to my left. So move the toe hitch to your right. Do you want it up more? I don't know. What do you reckon? It's pretty good. It's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. It's just... So by the time it's resting, it's almost resting the bottom now though. There's no way it's going to get that far down. Oh, okay. That's actually done. Well, if you're happy, I'm happy. Keep, keep lowering. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a win. That didn't go too bad for us. No, it does. Pretty good for a fallen student. <laughs> I don't think I want to get things much more wrong than that. <laughs> Just want to lock it down with a strap at the back so it doesn't move while we're eating. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea from a point of view of the more smooth, the more it'll... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Although, uh, it is kind of hassle though sometimes when you're working at the back and... Yeah, but I mean you can... Um, you can um, yeah, yeah, undo it from time to time. You can actually restrictions. Oh, okay, good enough. Too much? No. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, pretty simple little job in the end, but definitely one that needed doing. This, this toe eye here was getting very, very thin and I, I was really starting to uh, have doubts about it lasting. Given this boat copped a bit of damage in the last storm, I really don't want it happening again once it goes back in the water. So I'm pretty confident this stainless steel one's gonna last many, many, many years. This is just a normal common chandlery uh, item. We actually sell them on our own website. So if you're looking for one, check that out. But you can get them anywhere. Before I put this boat back in the water, I'll be rigging up some new lines for it. So I'll, I'll show you sort of closer towards getting this back in the water, how this boat gets moored. And um, I'll show you why this particular point is so critical for the way we do tend to moor these boats locally on the river. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Take care. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.